And so France wins it all and is the new world champion. Um, it was an entertaining match, um, but most of you might agree with me that France surely was not the better team today, uh, at least for the first half. Um, but yeah, the way the game went, that France had to do nothing and be one nothing ahead. Uh, Croatia took the game to France and the commentator here said it right that Croatia used more the te uh, technically tools, more the inspiration going forward and France just used the more clever tools. And I think this is uh, summarized, summarizes perfectly the first half. Uh, Croatia came out, had good chances and then yeah, Griezmann takes a little flight and gets a free kick that should not have been given. And then, yeah, the Croatian defense was defending this free kick kind of crazily, uh, standing very deep. Uh, I thought at first, yeah, was kind of maybe a little bit conservative defending, but when um, they discussed it in the studio after, afterwards, uh, it was said, yeah, if they would stay a little bit higher up, then they would also run together with the French back and also it gives the goalkeeper a little bit more time to react but standing that deep the ball comes straight at the goalkeeper kind of and then Mandzukic tries to save it and makes an on goal. First on goal in the World Cup final. Um, that was something I told to my wife before um, that the world, an on goal will decide the World Cup final. Well it did not decide the World Cup final and I'm happy about that because that would be the worst way of winning but the way France was playing so far I really thought oh yeah they will kill it off but fortunately they didn't and Croatia kept going at them and Perisic after free kick that did not work out well but they could get a few moves Perisic made a really great move around Conte and once he made the move I knew he's, he's, he's gonna score and so it was 1-1 one, one, fully deserved uh, full, fully served, and it was kind of what I was hoping for every game. I wanted Croatia goes into the lead, and yeah, if the free kick wasn't given, I'm not sure if Croatia would have gone back like that, but let's just say the game would have been otherwise exactly the same, and Croatia would have gone in the lead, and yeah, uh, they got the equalizer, and at that point you kind of felt, well, we had already yeah, how, how many minutes it was? 28 minutes or something like that? With already two goals. And you saw the, all the tactical concepts going out of the window. And that was a good thing because France, I don't know if it was nervousness or their plan was to hold back a little bit, but they didn't look well at the beginning of the game. Croatia really was at them. Uh, if it was tactically, it was kind of to get Croatia tired. And Croatia really played their hearts out. And I give lots of credit to Croatia. Um, they were definitely not the worst side in uh, the final, at least for the first half of a probably for one. Yeah, and then with the kind of the second attack of France, there was a corner kick and an unlucky handball by Perisic. Now we can discuss how um, reasonable it is that such a hand play is being called, but it was consistent with in the framework of how it was called this World Cup. If the hand is off the body and it moves even towards the ball as it did here, even though it was, a, I'm sure it was a reflex, it was not in any way a voluntary reaction. But if that happens, it is a penalty. So for that uh, reason, I don't think that this was a um, bad call by the referee. He went to the video and I also understand that he didn't give the penalty at first because um, that's also, don't call it and let the video review show you. He took a while to get the call right, but it was the right call. And so Griezmann with the first real shot on goal for France makes it 2-1. Two goals out of one shot. That's pretty efficient I would say. And then yeah, Croatia still kept going, but you could see that kind of it weighed heavy on them. That this was not what they wanted to happen. That uh, you're two one behind, you pulled back one goal, you were playing your hearts out, and you're again behind, and you could feel it. They still tried to attack though, but kind of the energy was gone, um, and so the first half ended two one. They came out storming.
uh, how I will evolve, evolve, would expect them. And honestly, this is the way Croatia, um, I know Croatia play with a lot of heart and, you know, maybe a little bit blind attacking. But that was their one chance, they thought. If maybe we can get it 2-2, two, two, maybe we can grind out the result. Uh, it was not to be. In a really nice attacking move, Pogba made that point. Uh, it was done and dusted. It was very interesting. At first he took a shot with his right and then with his left. And you could kind of already feel that the legs of Croatia were getting, getting heavier. They still kept going at it. And yeah, got the fourth one by Mbappé. And at that moment it could have gotten ugly, but I thought that France was... You could already sense it. we got to take it easy. They were trying to do a little bit, flips with the ball and, you know, play it fancy. And then Yoris makes his only mistake of the tournament and Majukic scores the best World Cup goal of the final. No, it was a horrible goal. Uh, it reminded me a lot about what um, was happening in the Champions League final this year. Uh, where he just saw the one defender, he didn't even feel that Manchukic was, was, was there and he got his 4-2. 4-2. Six goals in the World Cup final. Within 90 minutes, this has not happened since 1958 when Brazil won 5-2. 4-2 was the result in 66 in, at Wembley, but this was after overtime. It was 2-2 after regulation. Six goals in the World Cup final. I thought I'll never see anything like that. And if you watched my few finals preview where I give you my personal one, I expect it to be the one nothing, maybe two nothing thing. Four two. Never thought about it. But I have to give it to my wife. She said, Roland, don't be so patient with me. I have a feeling there will be lots of goals. I think I'm the expert, so I kind of brushed it off when she reminded me. Um, I kind of was, did you really say that? But then when she reminded me that she did, yes, she did. I was wrong, Kili. You were right. There were lots of goal scores and it was amazing. It was an entertaining game. It was even better than the third place game. And I was really happy to see that. Uh, then, you know, Croatia still got going. I was hoping they make it 4-3. Part of me even wanted to have, even if France will have scored fifth, I wanted to see the seven goals. I wanted to see the record being equalized, um, if not broken. That would have been my best wish, but you know, greedy. Six goals in a World Cup final. Just let that settle. Uh, in the end, yes. Uh, if you take the two attacking moves, the counter-attacks of France into account, yes, uh, because of how the game went, um, maybe played in their favor. And Pitana was not the luckiest with giving the first free kick. But I think in the end it didn't... If I'm honest, it didn't cost Croatia that much, but Croatia made it for a great final. They showed they fully deserved being there. But you also could see they were absolutely gassed at the end. Uh, they had played so much, but they really put their heart and soul into this game. Now, uh, there were also some streakers running onto the field, where, of course, FIFA didn't show anything. Um, I don't want to judge these guys. It is a little bit annoying that this happens at the World Cup final, but we know that there are things not right in Russia. So for that reason, probably we have, I have to pass judgment uh, when we know a little bit more, if we ever get to know why they were running onto the field. Uh, could be some human rights organization or Greenpeace action, I don't know. Yeah, and then it took forever. The game was over and it took forever, ever, ever, ever to get the trophy ceremony going. I guess they were discussing uh, who is not, who gets now the trophies. Uh, also, until all the presidents come down, I mean, this was, you know, uh, I love the Croatian president. Uh, she was really um, kind of, you could see, she was just happy being there at such an event for her country. But then you had the high security guys with Putin and Macron standing there. I think uh, it's made a lot of people nervous to have uh, two of the most powerful political leaders um, on the pitch in plain sight of everyone. Guess that was it. So, uh, well, before I talk about the ceremony, let's talk about uh, the jersey matchup first. I think it looked overall fine. It is just reminded me of why I didn't like the Croatia jerseys this year. Use this checkered pattern. Use it front. Use it on the back. Uh, the red shoulders with the white back, and then you have the checkered pattern on the front. It looks 
not good. I don't want to say horrible, it just doesn't look good. I like the color combination because you had really the blue, you had the white, you had the red. Um, and those are really great colors for a soccer game. But the creation jersey just doesn't look uh, great. I wonder why couldn't they make just make white shoulders and make it all white. Make it a, a, a predominantly white kit and it looks all right. I understand with this huge uh, checker pattern, you can't really replicate this on the back. Uh, we just to start with why do we need it that huge and with all these zigzaggy wavy lines here. Um, that alone didn't look good. Uh, but yeah, it's the better of the two Croatian kits and they are not the best Croatian kits ever. They're actually on the lower level. I'm sorry to say that uh, as much as I would have liked Croatia win, uh, I think the France shirt looked much better. I gotta say that. Uh, and I'm particularly happy because this shirt here I was, I was to be the only World Cup shirt that I'm gonna buy. Knowing me, yeah, it was never that I, that it will be on the orange. But this was, this was the one that I really thought I'm gonna get. I got it for cheap, and it's the World Champions shirt. And I'm not gonna get the one with the two stars. Oops, here, I'm not gonna get the one with the two stars because that's the one they won the World Cup in, not the one with the two stars. Uh, which also, you know, there were the reports that two-star jerseys will already be on sale on Monday and Nike has already prepared 20,000 of these. And oh, they're gonna jinx it. No, this is happening in every sport at the moment. They have all prepared the jerseys for sale. Uh, it is even other ways because those jerseys are shipped off to people in need and are made sure that this is in a, such a remote area of the world that those shirts if Croatia, let's say Croatia, I actually don't think that Croatia did produce, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were some at least for the players prepared. But if it was that those shirts should not go on sale, they are in some parallel universe, little village somewhere, Africa in the jungle, uh, South America, wherever, where they will never be seen. Uh, there was a, I, I know this same happens for Super Bowl champions, NBA champions, in NHL, uh, whatever. There's been a, a nice documentary about this parallel universe in the middle of Africa where teams that should never have won the, that never won the Super Bowl actually won it. So yeah, those exist. And I don't mind that. Better be prepared because uh, that's the way to go these days. You've got to be prepared. There was for sure a victory parade prepared for France. There was one prepared for Croatia and they will both have it. And I think as sorry as I was for the Croatian uh, national team to lose this final, where they were not the worst team, they were just a little bit unlucky and maybe a little bit naive. I think that's what I give to them. But they really played their hearts out and they made this final, the great final they had. It was, it was probably the greatest final I've seen uh, since I'm watching. I mean, I remember the 1986 final. That was my first watch, uh, soccer game that I've watched. But this, I was not a fan back then. My father made me watch it, see what he made out of me. Uh, so yeah, this was the best World Cup final I've seen since I'm watching, honestly. So, and I'm very happy for that. Uh, it passed like that, even though the kids tried to distract us. But you know, they're, they're, they're little, the next World, World Cup will be better. I'm sure about that, and it will be Christmas time. So, my last thoughts on the ceremony. Way too late, and then it started raining. And then the only umbrella is over Putin. I'm sorry, this was just such a horrible picture. Can they not find umbrellas quicker? And I think it was probably the last time we'll see a ceremony held on the field. It's a disaster for, for uh, the honoraries there. I like that the Croatian president really hugged every single one and showed good sporting spirit. Emmanuel Macron did the same. I know there was the French Federation president there and the Croatian Federation president, Dawa Shuka, that what we know. Uh, yeah, don't need them necessarily there. Uh, and that Putin then didn't hand over the trophy. I don't like how they, how, how, how they do it these days. I think, you know, the players are waiting there and then someone has to get the trophy there. Um, I like the old style better, where the captain then gets the trophy and goes down to the players. You don't need to do it Copa del Rey style, where Iniesta himself walked up and he was the only one lifting a trophy. That was stupid. Yeah, but uh, I think this can be done better, uh, much, much better. And maybe it is even better to put it up on the, uh, you know, 
where all the famous people are sitting. I think this would be a better place to hold the Triff Trophy Ceremony. I know that on a pitch everyone sees it, but if you're behind, you don't see it either. So have it up there and put it on the screens. Um, and the one thing that bothered me is that once Infantino, Putin doesn't take the trophy, but once Infantino carries it over there, every one of the honorees needs to touch the trophy. Before the final, they make this whole thing. Only Philip Lam, the one who earned the World Cup, is allowed to touch this trophy. I mean, there was this model next to him. There were other people next to him. He is the one who touches the trophy. And then suddenly the French president can touch it. The Croatian president can touch it. The two uh, federation, they even can kiss it. No, 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 no. I feel strongly about that. This is the president of the host nation gives the trophy to the captain of the team. And those are the only ones touching it. Um, I didn't like that. But still, lots of love going out for the president of Croatia. Um, she really, she really excited thing. She, she, she did wrong and I think it's a minor thing, but uh, you see, I can get a little bit emotional about it. Well, more thoughts should come tomorrow on my way to work, I'm sure. I probably will wear this one. Why not? Now, talked a lot about this shirt. Let's get about this Croatia shirt. You've seen it already in my videos. Uh, I wanted to get a Croatia away jersey because I really felt that Croatia, I deserve, I need one and the team deserves to have one. It's not my absolute favorite. I like the one that has the strike out here with the jacket pattern or where the pattern is here on the side or maybe uh, so just the band, but it's still not, not a bad one. And what I like about it, I got the cheap, that's, that, that I always like. But it has, it's the player version. I think I got it for 20, 20 bucks with all the holes here on the side. 2010 version. I don't know how well you see it. Yeah. So that's really, really nice. And it actually, it feels quite nice wearing it. Yep. My Croatia jersey. And Uvijek Vjarni, my colleague says, always trust, always believe. Something like that. Well, this was. My last thoughts after a match. I think it was a great match. I don't think that... I think a draw would have been more deserved and then uh, maybe not penalty, penalty shows. But yeah, the more clever team won and I think overall France was the best and most complete team. And the last thing I'm gonna say is I was waiting for children to be brought onto the field. Then I realized the French squad is so freaking young. They're children themselves. So yeah, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video and most of the videos. Uh, I think I'm gonna do maybe two videos tomorrow, the whole World Cup Roundup, and then I'll think what I'll do next. I surely keep posting at least one video daily. Hope you enjoyed the World Cup as much as I did. Hope you enjoyed these videos. If you like them, please hit like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.